welcome everyone to the machine learning overview lecture in this lecture we are going to take a little bit of time to discuss some basic machine learning concepts and principles to set a foundation tone for our future lectures we are going to talk about the basics of of supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinfo and reinforcement learning unlike typical computer programs machine learning techniques will literally learn from data that is the same machine learning algorithms can actually find insights from data even if they are not specifically instructed what to look for in that data and that's what separates a machine learning algorithm from a from a, from a typical computer program a basic generic computer program you are going to uh, you're just given uh, the machine learning algorithm a set of rules to follow instead of actually telling it what to look for so it will find the insights on its own now in this course we are going to discuss how to use tensorflow for three major types of machine learning algorithms uh, the first type is of course the supervised learning the second is the unsupervised learning and third and the most important of all is the re uh, reinforcement learning we'll also touch on other topics that we can use uh, with tensorflow in day-to-day -day applications but this lecture is primarily about how machine learning works first of all what is machine learning how is it different from general programs how does it work what is the model of machine learning what is the uh, what are the processes the standard ones which are used by programmers all over the world and also in the end in the second part of this lecture of course uh, we'll discuss how do we measure the accuracy of a machine learning process that is if we have created a model using some machine learning algorithm uh, be it supervised unsupervised or reinforcement there are certain techniques to determine the accuracy so as to how that 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 particular algorithm fares when it is exposed to the real data so we'll just get started and in the first of uh, the three types of machine learning we'll uh, we'll discuss the supervised learning first so now in uh, so just to start uh, let's uh, let's first discuss supervised learning supervised learning uses labeled data to predict the label given some features and that's the really important part so what it basically does is that you are given a data you are given what uh, what label it belongs to right and then you are given an another set of data which is the which is the test data will uh, will come to this terminology later what is test data and what is training data but for now just for the sake of the argument let's uh, uh, say that the test data is the real-time data that we that we use right so in supervised learning we have a test data and we have a training data so for training data we have been uh, we are provided with the uh, with certain labels that is if if there is uh, one piece of data we we are given that this particular data set belongs to this particular category and there is a huge huge amount of data so what we have to do basically is we have to create an algorithm a model which maps which with the help of the training data create uh, uh, creates a model which later on maps the test data to its appropriate label or classes right so just to uh, 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 you know summarize because i've uh, i think i've spoken a lot uh, supervised learning uses label data to predict the label uh, using some features and that's the important part of this particular thing that we are given some labels and we use some uh, we use some features to determine the label of uh, of uh, of test data or the real time data the fact that the data is labeled so whenever you think of supervised learning think label if the label uh, uh, is continuous it is called regression problem and if it is categorical it is called the classification problem all right so we'll 
we'll go through the you know both of these categories what is regression and what is classification because it is difficult to understand uh, as i say it uh, so uh, again to uh, uh, to summarize supervised learning uses label data uh, to to predict a label uh, given uh, some some the, uh, some features are given uh, about the data and we use those features to determine the label of that particular data if it is continuous it is called a regression problem if it, if it is categorical it is called classification problem so let us take an example uh, to get uh, the hold of these things and uh, to begin with the example uh, of a classification problem uh, which would fall under the supervised learning uh, as we discussed uh, a minute before uh, we'll have some features such as height and weight uh, uh, and uh, 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 height and weight uh, and the label could be something like gender so uh, what we have is uh, we have height and weight of certain people right and uh, uh, with the help of uh, this data height and weight will uh, classify uh, the people into their respective genders we'll try uh, to do that uh, in uh, in just a while uh, so uh, our task would be uh, uh, to uh, to predict their the gender and uh, if we just look at this particular graph which is very important uh, in this graph you can uh, 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 in this plot actually you can uh, see that uh, there is a there's a graph uh, on uh, on the x-axis we are given the weight and on the uh, uh, y-axis we are given the height and there are some uh, pl uh, uh, blue and violet points uh, where the blue point uh, points signify the male members uh, of the group and the violet points signify the female members so uh, remember since this is supervised learning and classification uh, as you already know the label uh, in this figure our labels are male and female genders and we have height uh, and weight as our features right so our labels are male and female and uh, the features the features that we use to to classify uh, people into their respective labels or the data sets into their uh, respective labels or classes uh, those features in this particular example uh, are height and weight right uh, okay so so for a classification uh, uh, task our model ends up being trained on some training data here and then in the future we'll get a new point right so if you can just see uh, a green point just popped up right so we'll get a new point uh, uh, whose features we don't know right so uh, such as we know the uh, sorry whose whose uh, whose features we know right so uh, this green point could be plotted somewhere on this graph because we are given with the height and weight of this particular person the unknown one uh, the green person right and uh, but we are not uh, told whether he is a male or a female whether uh, uh, that particular person is a, a person is a male or a female right so this particular uh, 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 data of uh, this particular person is to be mapped in, uh, into its respective class right uh, okay so uh, so uh, we, we know the features we do know the features uh, like height and weight but we don't know what uh, it what class this this green person belongs to so our machine learning algorithm will predict according to what it has been trained on what class it should be and uh, in this case you know we can all pretty safely say that it is a male right it it is a male so uh, actually if you see uh, it's not uh, that uh, big of a deal this this uh, this whole technique of supervised learning it's it's not a rocket science you know you just uh, pick out uh, any random uh, 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 person uh, from the street and you show him uh, this this particular graph and even he'll be able to figure out that okay this particular green person he must be a male there are more chances of uh, of uh, of it being a male than being a female right okay so 
you know uh, i uh, just to you know go a little bit off the topic uh in my uh, during my undergrad in my final year we were supposed to you know submit a project uh it was a a six month project right and uh, we were asked to do uh, something on cutting edge technology which was just coming up uh, back then so machine learning was was actually one of them and i uh, along with my partner we decided to you know work on uh, several machine machine learning techniques to classify uh, some data and uh, we actually used a new set right so what we did was we uh, we you know we, we download downloaded random ra random set uh, sets of uh, news articles from uh, from some websites and uh, we made our training data from the existing ones right like uh, the hindu indian express and all those uh, sites and then we uh, you know uh, sort of made um a machine learning model using naive bayesian algorithm using uh, using svm algorithm using k nearest neighbor algorithms to classify the news uh, articles the test data news articles that is for which we didn't know which uh, which which class it belonged to into their respective classes so like what what we did was we basically classified news articles into different categories there were uh, there was no binary classes involved like uh, uh, in this particular example where only male and female uh, labels uh, are allowed so this is actually pretty simple because only because that new person if any new data is being uh, thrown into this uh, into this particular graph it has to be a male or a female there is no other choice but in that case there were six to seven categories different categories so that also achieved more than 80 percent of accuracy and we used only those algorithms which were uh, which were you know already there so you, so you could imagine that what this means right what what this technique could do it could actually make our lives so much simpler so uh just to uh just you know I told this so that you know you 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 get a brief idea on what kind of projects are being done uh, in in this particular field. Okay, so uh, now uh, so uh, as we discussed, supervised learning, two types of uh, supervised learning: regression and classification. Classification we have covered, right? So in uh, in classification we have uh, uh, different labels. We have you know as as we just saw. Um, categorical this right we have categorical uh, uh, labels and in regression we have continuous labels right so uh, regression problems again a supervised learning technique but now the only difference here is that the label instead of being categorical uh, such as male or female as we just saw it is continuous like right? and the example of such a uh, of a of you know such a feature uh, i would say would be say house price or stock price right so uh, these labels like house price you cannot say that house price could only be uh, 100000 dollars or 2 uh, or 200000 dollars or stock price uh, stock prices could be only say uh, 100 dollars or 200 dollars it could vary between uh, you know uh, any number between these two values or or any other value uh, for for that matter so a house price could be say $99,000 $99,000 $848 right so uh, there is no category so we uh, if we plot that particular uh, uh, house price on a graph we'll get a continuous curve so that's why uh, this uh, this particular uh, 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 technique is called regression because uh, there is uh, there is no categorical data there is a continuous data right okay so uh, in this case uh, we'll have a data set with features such as a uh, square footage right uh, number of uh, rooms in the house right uh, and uh, we need to predict some continuous values 
such as house price. So when the task is given to predict the price, house size and the number of rooms uh, will predict the selling price of the house. So when we plot out this uh, data, it looks, you know, something like something like this, right? So uh, just to, you know, uh, compare regression and uh, classification in classification, we used height and weight as uh, the features in regression. We are uh, we are using rooms, uh, number of rooms and ro uh, and house size as the features in uh, in regression. We have uh, we'll actually have uh, uh, continuous data, continuous uh, 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 data on on the graph uh, as as uh, as labels. Uh, but in uh, in classification, we had you know finite number of labels, right? Like uh, like male and male or female, or like you know uh, any of the news category uh, categories as as I just uh, you know discussed a while back, like national, international, sports, etc. Right? Okay, so uh, coming back to the graph, you know, in this graph, uh, we have the price on y axis, as you can see. Uh, and uh, let's say square feet is the only feature that we take into account for now, just for the uh, you know, simplicity of the argument. Uh, and uh, we will uh, we'll keep that particular uh, feature on the x axis, right? So, on the x axis, we have uh, our feature the square feet of the house indicating how big the house is. And then on the y axis, we have the actual label and we are trying to predict uh, the house price, the price of the house uh, so that we can make a good bargain in the market. Right. And in this case, the label is continuous as we have just uh, as we have just discussed, uh, because it cannot be sli uh, split up into categorical units. Of course, they could be infinite categorical units if we are, you know, really trying to split it up. So uh, our model will end up uh, creating some sort of fit to the data so this is the fit right uh, it won't be an uh, an exact fit but it would more or less give us an idea uh, on how the price the house price changes with the change in square feet of the house that is how the house price changes with the change in uh, uh, area of the house because we have only kept uh, area as our uh, only feature to to determine or, or, or to model our data and determine the house price, right? So, okay, so th uh, our model will, you know, create this fit. And, and in this case, uh, it kind of has a trend here that the larger the house uh, size is, the higher is the price. And it is not a rocket science to understand that. Uh, it is much obvious, right? Okay, so uh, so then when, uh, you know, when we, uh, when we get a new house whose price we don't know, but we do know its features such as square footage of the house. We end up checking out uh, uh, our model and it, and it, and it uh, return back its predicted price. So uh, if we just throw a, a random uh, uh, data, say we want to know the price of uh, this blue dot, like if, uh, if there is a house whose square feet uh, is indicated by this blue dot then we can get the price using this uh, this loosely fitted curve that we've just used uh, th that we've just caught using our training data right okay so so that's how uh, we uh, use regression supervised learning algorithm and that this is a very basic example of the, uh, this so supervised learning has uh, the model trained on historical data and is already labeled such as, uh, you know, those previous house, uh, house sales examples that we just, uh, we just saw, right? So once the model is trained on that, uh, uh, on that historical data, and it can, uh, it can then be used on uh, new data where only the features are known to attempt the prediction. So we just did this, right? We knew the data. We, if we just, you know, if you just see the, uh, uh, graph again, we knew the data indicated by the orange, um, uh, dots we 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 draw uh, we drew a curve along that uh, 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 along those uh, orange dots we got a curve right then we uh, then we threw a new value right an unknown value uh, of which we only knew the house uh, house area and we got the price using our curve 
so this is how supervised learning works right so this technique is actually uh, really useful uh, if you are a real estate agent you know i actually know a friend of mine who who works for a real estate company uh, a us based real estate company and uh, he uh, he you know he did all that work on a very big scale so they had like you know more than 50 features actually uh, we we have only taken one feature into account they had mo uh, more than uh, 50 features and uh, their uh, their the basis was uh, there in more than uh, i don't know 15 to 20 cities of of usa i'm not really sure about that but uh, that is you know a, a really uh, interesting work and actually a lot of real estate agents uh, are using uh, these techniques you know to maximize their profits because it you know sort it sort of gives them the cre credit uh, the uh, the idea and uh, the confidence to invest you know in in some property uh, same is the case for stock market analysts uh, they because stocks uh, like they have huge amount of data the stock markets so the stock market gurus they analyze the, that data they uses machine learning algorithm they use machine learning algorithms and uh, they predict the future of any stock on a particular given day given the conditions the features uh okay so uh now uh we are done with the supervised learning technique so let us uh, move on to the next technique unsupervised learning right so in supervised learning uh, what when we first discussed uh i told you that we had an imp important point to remember and that was that we had historical data available we had training training data available we had a data where we had some uh, uh some data points and we had the labels assigned to that particular point right so uh if you just you know refer back to uh, to the graph we had to, these orange dots right we had the the past data and we used this particular particular data to um to draw a curve and predict the future right but what if we don't have historical uh, data available right and uh, this is the point where unsupervised learning kicks in and trust me it's even more interesting than than supervised learning a lot of techniques uh, and you know a lot of fuzziness is there in uh, there in this particular technique right so okay so if we don't have any uh, historical uh, data available historical labels for uh, for our data available uh, we have uh, we only have features uh, since you know we technically have no rights Uh, or 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 correct an answers to fit on that uh there is no label right so we actually need to look for patterns in the data to find the structure because we we don't have labels we don't know what is data uh is all about like uh just take the example of uh of uh say uh uh the the example that we used with the supervised learning uh technique where uh, we had heights and weight of different people and we categorized those people into boys and girls right so what happens is in supervised learning we were given the labels so one so a person has to be a boy or a girl right but say if you're not given any labels right so what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll categorize those data those data sets into you know two or more different categories depending upon uh, depending upon their future uh, 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 upon their features this is what what i'm you know uh, re really trying to tell you that uh, uh we actually need to look for patterns in the data and find the structure and this is known as the super unsupervised learning problem because we actually don't have the labels we have uh, we, we have no supervision so let's walk through an example to get a clear understanding uh, and uh, for example uh, you're given data that has a uh, feature height and weight for breeds of dog 
and uh, however this is unsupervised learning you actually don't have the label you don't know what actual uh, breeds these dogs belong to and so you uh, you have no labels for the breeds you you just have the actual features the height and the weight of these things uh, so a task is to cluster together uh, the data into similar groups it is uh, then up to the data scientist or whoever responsible to perform the machine learning task to interpret what the clusters actually means and that usually indicates that supervised that unsupervised learning has a lot to do with domain knowledge 